So, good morning from a very cold Glencoe. It's mid-October now. Hello, Fern. It's mid-October now, and we've got our first snow on the hills, which is brilliant. I'm so delighted for this shot. So where I've come is I've parked up at Hamish's cottage and I've come down a little bit and they've come to what I believe is the most underrated photo location in the whole of the Glen. It's a wonderful spot where you get the Three Sisters of Glencoe but you get this beautiful river in there as well. So come and join me and come and find the most underrated photo in Glencoe which is the Espens of Glencoe. So the Espens are a wonderful location. Um, what you need to do is you can just squeeze into Hamish's cottage. And I've got to say the cottage is looking so rough now and the sooner they knock this thing down the better I really do. It's a real blot on the Glen. Um, but you can kind of squeeze in next to it. That road is really dodgy. It's a really dodgy corner around the bend there. So when you're parking be careful and also when you're crossing that road be really careful. Uh, it's a really dodgy section. But once you climb over the barrow, you can head on down and you can see the River Co in front of you. Just walk straight down to that and you'll get these beautiful S-Bends. And they're a lovely location because they do a nice leading line that leads the eye up to the Three Sisters of Glencoe itself. OK, I'm going to head on down this bank in a little bit further and then I'm going to see if I can find a nice composition. OK, that's me come right down to the water now and it's really nice. The water's crystal clear today and I'm getting that little bit of turquoise colour as well, which is really lovely. Um, I think I'm going to polarise it so I can see in because the rocks here, there's such a variety of rocks. The actual rock itself is just pure granite, but some of the rocks inside of different varieties of slates and all sorts of, sort of uh, volcanic stuff. So I'm getting a real mix of colours under the water, which is lovely. So I'm going to put the polarizer on so I can see into that water and see them beautiful colours. Now the textures this time of year are brilliant and I was right to come bang on this time. I've got some nice light coming over there as well, but I've got some beautiful variety in the vegetation uh, and that really gives it a lovely bit of interest to this shot. So I'm down at the water. I think I've got a good composition and what I'm trying to achieve is I'm trying to achieve where the river flows through the shot mostly. All I don't want to do is, is like little sections of the river blocked off by rocks. So I think here is the best where I get the maximum kind of run of the river to lead the eye down to maybe uh, Garanek or, or maybe the Lost Valley, something like that as being the actual centerpiece of this shot. Okay, I think I've got some really nice light coming here, so I'm going to wait a little bit until the light's good. Yeah, so the s bends really are like a, it used to be a little hidden secret gem, but it's getting more popular now, and I have seen a few more shots of it, but it's still a completely underrated location compared to anywhere else in Glencoe. And the good thing is, is when you get down here, you do get this nice river and you get this, this U-shaped valley, the Lost Valley, and then uh, Gar Anik as well. That very pointed mountain from here is really quite dominant in the shot. So it's quite a nice location. Now, it is a little bit of moons aligning really this time of year because you don't want to, if you, if you get sort of summertime, then the light comes straight behind me and it illuminates all this pretty early on. But the danger with that is then all the vegetation is green and it's a similar colour green so you lose any textures in the shot. But if you leave it a little bit late and you start coming down to um, September and then you get into October, what happens is then the beech trees, these silver birch and the beech that are around me, they all start going yellow and the leaves start going yellow. But you've only got about a two week period when they are yellow before they all get blown off. So you kind of got that two weeks and in that period, the light just comes over and will start illuminate uh, the three sisters here from this area. 
if I leave it later in the year, I lose the leaves, and then the sun comes over a bit further around, and then this face of particularly Gar Anak is not illuminated. So there's a kind of a very small window to get this exact shot. And that's why I've been saving this for about a year and a bit because this is the shot that's been a long time coming. But if I can get that light on the front end of Gar Anak, then I've probably got a really good shot. So I'm gonna go and hunt around for a good composition. There's quite a few around here, but it's kind of getting one that's really gonna pop for me. Yeah, just looking around this location, I think what I wanna do, which I don't usually do, is I really wanna soften this water down because uh, there's a lot of angular rocks around here and, it, and, and if by having that fast water I'm not getting any uh, contrast between that so I think what I'm going to do is which I wouldn't normally do in a really fast flowing river like this I'm going to really slow it down I reckon just to give a nice softness to the water to give a bit of contrast compared to those angular rocks okay let me talk you through the composition this one so I'm going to flip you around and so what I've managed to do is I've got the camera and I've actually gone into portrait orientation and I'm on the really wide angle lens. I've actually come down a bit, but I'm about at 14 mil, something like that. I've probably come down to 16 mil. And by being here, what I've got is I've got this flow of the water. So this water flows down and then flows off down this little drop here and then flows off into the distance up into the mountain there. And that's that sort of lead that your eye gets down all the way down up to Garanic there, which is pretty good. If I move over a bit, you've got a bit of blocking from this boulder here. And if I go the other way, watching my camera, then I don't get the flow of the river. So you can see the river then flows here and then it stops here because it's, it's overlapped and blocked and then off again. So what I've got is little sections of river coming through rather than one section flowing off. So particularly this section here, which is a problem. So by coming around a little bit, what I then get is I get this nice flow coming all the way around. So just take a little bit of time on your composition there. It's easy to get excited, particularly when you've got some good light, and I've got some good light coming here, and not really think and be intelligent about your shot because you're too excited of what's going on. So slow yourself down and just have a bit of an intelligent look at the shot before you take it. But I've got some great light coming here. I think this is a fantastic shot. So if this shot works, here's the image. wait for this lie um, I don't usually do this kind of thing but uh, KNF concept has sent me some filters to try out so thank you very much for sending these um, I'm not a snob if somebody sends me something I'll have a look at it if it's good I'll have a look at it and I'll, I'll, I'll review it so uh, this is the uh, Nano X series filter kit and what you get with that is an ND1000 a color polar CPL sorry a UV and then the ring as well and you get it in this little box and it comes in this little pouch. Now, I've had a few clients with these magnetic uh, filters recently, and wow, what a difference, particularly when it's really cold like this. So it, it's quite a nice idea, and I say, oh, well, I could get myself some of these magnetic filters, save me faffing around with the carriages. So this is quite a good thing to send to me, so I appreciate that k &F concept. It comes in a lovely little pouch, it's all well made, and uh, what you get is, you get your little, uh, adapter ring so I've got that from a wide angle uh, and then you get your 10 stopper and your polarizer and then you do get a UV filter which if you want to protect your lens you can put that on I generally don't use these very often um, but uh, yeah so just looking at the quality it's actually really good quality 
and because they're ultra thin I'm not getting that vignetting that I get when I put my carriage on and I get the little edge of the filter around particularly when I'm at like um, really wide say 14 mil something like that so this is a great idea and wow how easy they are to put on once you've got that ring screwed on which screws on really easily then these just click in and click out and you can move them and move them around take them off take them on again and they're really good so I, I, it's a really good idea and I think uh, I'm going to stick with these uh, and the quality looks all right I'm looking on the camera and there's no um, sort of color cast or anything like that so I'm really happy with them so yeah thank you very much K&F Concept I'll appreciate that and I'm probably going to use these from now on okay I think I've got a pretty decent shot there so what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to head up towards the sun here now when I drive on the A82 I can see this big waterfall just coming off on the distance there just actually just before the Glencoe waterfall which some people mistakenly call it the meeting of the three waters but if you watch my video before I go and actually find the meeting of the three waters I'll put the link at the top there which is actually further on down here so this is actually called Glencoe waterfall but just just down from that you can see another big drop I think it's tricky to get to but what I'm going to try and do is try and head up there I've got to be careful with the dog um, and we'll head up there and we're going to see if we can find this other waterfall Yeah, so I've got a bit closer and I can see it. Um, it might be a bit tricky getting to it though. This is probably why we've never seen this shot. I'll show you what I'm looking at. And you can see the falls there, looking pretty good, and the river coming down here. There's this little bit of sort of crag sticking out here, which I'm not too sure how I'm gonna get around that, because I kind of want to be the other side of that crag looking back up to the waterfall. So uh, yeah, give me a few minutes, I'll work this one out and then uh, hopefully we'll get over there and we'll be lined up for this beautiful falls yeah i don't think i'm going to be able to get to this it's a bit of a perilous drop so i kind of have to be a bit safe here i'll show you what i'm looking at um yeah so there's the waterfall but i've got this big drop here it's quite a big drop to get to it where i want to be is on that platform there shooting up the way I can't actually see any way down, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. Let me have a think about this one. Yeah, that's a real shame, actually. It's looking lovely. It's a lovely waterfall. I just can't get to it. There's just no way I'm going to get to it at all. Um, I'll flip you around. You can have a look. look. So there it is, and it's lovely in the distance. I've got this big cliff face here, and I probably could scramble a little bit, but with a dog, I just don't feel comfortable with it so I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably get the drone out here and then uh, probably fire the drone up see if I can get a drone shot of it and then see if I can blur the water later on in post okay let's go and get that drone out shall we Okay, so what I've done is I've flown the drone up now because it's in a really deep gorge there's no way with that wider angle lens on the drone itself there's no way I'm getting that all in one shot so what I've decided to do is I've flown the drone quite low and I've taken a shot at the bottom because what I want is I want the big waterfall but then I want a bit of depth to this photograph so what I wanted was another drop of a waterfall in front of it so I've positioned the drone, so I've got the waterfall big one coming down and then I've got this little step coming down as well, just to give me some depth to this photograph. And then what I've had to do, believe it or not, is I've had to stitch together three or four photographs, taking like a vertical panoramic up the way, so I can get the whole waterfall in. 
Now there's a little bit of work in this, a bit of post-production just to make a good shot, but I definitely think there is a good image here. So after a bit of work at home, if you like the shot, here's the shot. really good wasn't it i quite like that little drone shot took a bit of work in the old post processing but i got there in the end uh, and the waterfall is really nice a pity about the access and maybe one day i'll come back and leave the dog at home and get some walking boots on and scramble a little bit over there and get a bit closer um, but it's still a really nice shot so uh, yeah i'm delighted and every time i drive back across the a82 i can now look down and see this waterfall and know what it looks like because i've been to it cool well thank you so much for watching if you do me a favour and head on down and just click on that thumbs icon, it just gives me a good boost to the channel. And if you really like my content, then go on to that subscribe button as well. And if you tickle the bell, you'll get a notification every time I post. Um, great to see you. I've bumped into a few folks today, so it's been lovely to meet you guys and all. Um, so say hello to all them. Some of them recognise me. Not that my film star wrote, um, but it was quite nice to speak to you. And if you want, write me a comment as well. I do love a good comment and I'll always try and reply. Okay, thanks for watching. I might do another vlog in a, in a week or two because the light and the colours this time of year in October are just fantastic. So definitely get up to Glencoe this time of year. It's been lovely to speak to you and we'll see you in the next vlog.